We've been looking at cryptography. By now we're sort of understanding the idea of taking a text, punching it through a mathematical algorithm and getting a cipher text out the other end, right? Like so. Now, last time we looked at a particular way of encrypting information. A particular system for going through mathematically and turning a message into something which is completely undecipherable. Well, not completely, but unless you know the key. What was the way, what was the method called? Do you remember? It was an acronym. Mm. It, was the, it was the RSA crypto system. That's what we looked at. And one of the reasons why it was so powerful is because it was not symmetric cryptography. Right? It wasn't symmetric. Um, you needed two separate pieces of information to uh, encrypt something and then to decrypt it. Right? And you couldn't easily work out one from the other. Okay? So that was really, really cool. Now, the piece of maths that really undergirded that was this. Prime numbers. Right? Prime numbers are a big deal. And what's kind of funny about them is that prime numbers they come under a topic called number theory. Okay. Now, number theory is um, what we call a kind of pure math, so it's not applied, it doesn't have to do with physical situations. It's all just kind of playing around, which is why some mathematicians call it, they call it recreational maths. Which, um, maybe for some of you, you're like, that's two words that shouldn't be in the same yeah. sentence together. But all the same, the point is, they're not doing this maths for work, like I need to calculate the strength of this bridge and what material I'll need to do, otherwise you know, the cars will all fall off into the sea or something like that. It's not thinking of a real world application. It's just for recreation. But after doing all of this work in this and, and working out all these things about prime numbers, the applications of it have been incredible practical, right? The benefit to society has been enormous every second. Billions of messages being sent around the world, all encrypted in this way, right? The internet, all kinds of digital data security, it all relies on this recreational maths, okay? So we're going to spend a bit of time thinking about prime numbers, right? Now, help me remember, when we were doing the RSA crypto system, there were some ingredients that went into it in order to generate the public key and the private key, right? Or the lock and key, if you like. So you might remember that there was a pair of numbers each time, and I think the example we looked at was 514 and 1114. Now I want you to remember, this is viewing it from the outside. Right? It's like, oh, this is what, it, what the keys look like after everything's finished. But there was a mathematical process that went into creating these numbers. How do we do it? What was the starting point? Excellent. I had to choose, we called them P and Q, um, two prime numbers and then you put them together okay you multiply them that's how we got 14 because our numbers were 2 and 7 and then off you go everything kind of unfolded from there right so therefore it kind of stands to reason that if you've got this prime number right like you kind of need new prime numbers every time you want to send messages right if you want them to be secure because I don't want everyone to be sharing the same numbers then you'll all be able to read each other's messages and that's kind of not a good thing. Okay. So the question becomes, well, how many prime numbers are there? How many prime numbers are there? Now, what do your instincts say? What do you think is the number of prime numbers that exist? Any number. Okay, now, we've got, we've got a few options, okay? We've got a few options. Uh, one of the options I heard was infinite. Okay, I heard that. That's an option. Uh, I guess the opposite would be there's some finite number. Right? There's a third option which is we don't know. We don't know whether it's finite or infinite because you know if there are trillions of these numbers, we can go and have a look through them and we can keep on searching and searching and, and not get to the end for a very long time, but it's still not infinite. Trillions and trillions is not infinite, it's not even close, actually. Okay. So it's one of these three answers. Alright. So I'm going to show you that actually there is a proof for this. There is a proof for which one of these options it is. I'm going to show you, okay? And then you'll see by the end which the option is, okay? So here's your subheading, which is Euclid's proof for prime numbers. 
I'm not going to tell you the exact name of the proof because that would kind of give away what the answer is. Alright? Yep. Can you wait about three minutes just to finish and then you can go. Euclid's proof of Prime's numbers works like this. Okay. It just says suppose. Suppose. Or, or consider. Suppose someone comes to you and they say, look, I have, I've worked out all of the prime numbers. Here they are all written down. I have got on a piece of paper, or many, many pieces of paper, a set of all of the prime numbers. Okay? So let's say, suppose P, right, is the set of all prime numbers. Okay? So we can actually start to write out some of this, right? Here's our set notation. Okay? The first prime number, of course, is 2. It's 2. Um, it's not 1. And there, by the way, there is actually, like, it's not arbitrary that it's not 1. There's a very important reason why it starts with 2. You can ask me that later on if you're curious. Okay? After 2? 3. three. <laughs> 5. 7. 11. And on. Okay. So just suppose it actually, rather than dot, 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 all the way to the end, suppose it does actually end at some kind of number, right? So let's call that final number x, where x is the final prime, or the largest prime. Okay. So I've got this list, and I bring it to you, and I say, look, I've got them all. Go on, prove me wrong. We can. This is how you're going to do it. Okay. Just as a thought experiment, okay. suppose that, you know, this, this list here, what I've got listed here, okay. suppose I said 11 was the last prime number. Suppose I said 11 was x. Okay. Clearly it's not. You know there are more. But we could rehearse this with x is some much larger number that you're not sure if it's the last one. And um, we can still do it. It's just that the maths is a bit harder to follow. So suppose you have all of these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take every member, every element in set P, okay, take every element in P, and what I want is I'm going to work out the product of the whole lot, okay, in this case, 2 by 3 by 5 by 7 by 11, okay, and find the product. Okay. Now this number is something we can actually calculate. That's why I chose such a small number. Okay. So you can get to your calculator and do we have a number? Really? Wow. Did you yeah, calculate that? Okay. 2320. Is that what we said? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. I'll take your word for it. Right. Now, you got 10 in there. Cool. All right. Fantastic. So now here's what I'm going to do. Right. This number this number clearly is not prime, right? Because look, it has, it has five factors, okay? Aha, but now I'm going to add one. Then add one. Two, three, one? That's fine. I forgive you, that's okay. I'm not so gracious like that. All right, so here you go. Here's our product of all the numbers in this set of prime numbers, okay? Now have a look at this number. I've just added 1 to the product of all of your primes. Okay? The curious thing about this number, once I've added 1, is that, well, let's think of these numbers that I've got here. Right? I can divide 2310, I can divide it evenly by all of these numbers. Right? But this number, cannot be divided evenly by any of these. Why not? I don't even have to test it. I already know. Why not? It's because I added one. So what's going to happen when I divide? I'm going to get a remainder, aren't I? Right? In fact, using the language that we already know, right? I can say 2, 3, 1, 1, right? Mod anything in here. Any of those numbers. Pick one. X, right? Any of those numbers it's going to be equal to 1 every single time, right? Because you add them up and you'll only ever get to 2,310. Is that why 1 is not prime? Not quite. It's a different reason. Okay. So that has something to do with it. Okay. So what have I just established, right? 
It's like, well, you came to me with the list of primes, or I came to you with list of primes. But what we've just shown is that there's a number that's missing, okay? So your original list, right, P, P cannot be the set of all prime numbers because you're missing one, right? We're missing one. Then, of course, you can say, well, well, maybe that's the last one. But no, it's not, because what would we do? You do it all over again. You go this by this by this by this by this, and then you'd add one, and you've got, hey presto, a new prime, okay? So this is actually not just Euclid's proof for prime numbers. This is Euclid's proof for the fact that there is an infinite number of prime numbers, okay? It's not just a, we think it is, but we're kind of not sure. Look, by the sheer logic of it, and it's the power of maths, right? It's proven. No matter how many, how big your number is, we can always go through this exercise and get a new prime. Okay, it's pretty cool. 